Welcome to lesson five on photosynthesis. Today we're going to be doing SC8, describe the method for testing a leaf for starch using scientific language. So we're going to be testing two leaves for starch. We're going to be testing one that's been left in the dark for 24 hours before the test and one that's been in the light for 24 hours before the test. You're going to start by filling out the green section, please. So first you need to fill out what is the purpose or aim where we are testing a leaf for starch. So if you remember, as a plant photosynthesizes, it creates glucose, you can see it there, C6H12O6, and then it stores it as starch in starch storage granules in the palisade cells of the leaf and all over the plant. So we're going to be doing this starch test twice, once with a plant that's been kept in the light for 24 hours and one that's been kept without light for 24 hours. So you have to write a prediction as to whether they will or won't have starch in each. So you should now easily be able to fill out both sides of or both parts of this green box Please do not move on until you have filled out this green box entirely because we will be marking it next. As ever, you need to pause on here so that you can mark your answers and correct them if necessary. So here are the answers to the green box. Make sure that you correct them if you got them wrong and tick them if you got them right. Please do not move on to the next section until you have completed the green box and marked and corrected it. So unfortunately you can't do this experiment so we're going to go over to Mr French in the lab to show us how to do it in a moment and your job is going to be to fill in the missing words in the method. This is one of the more complex methods that you have to know and it's a really common exam question so it's a really good idea to learn this by heart. Right, we're going to go through our method uh, together as I do it. So. First of all, we're going to take a beaker. We're going to take a beaker, and we're going to half fill it with tap water, and then I'm going to pop it on top of the tripod and gauze and heatproof mat, and then I'm going to switch my Bunsen burner to quiet blue. So it was on safety flame, switching it to quiet blue, making sure that I keep my face well away so that I don't hurt myself. I'm wearing my safety specs, making sure that I'm stood up. As I'm about to start heating up some water. So I'm going to pop that on there and I'm going to keep an eye on it until it starts to boil. It's uh, going to take a little while so uh, I'll come back to you when it's actually boiling. Welcome back. Right, so my water is now boiling, it took a little while, uh, but I was busy drawing my diagram and now I'm going to add in my two leaves. So I've got one leaf which has been left in the dark and one leaf that's been left in the light. So I'm going to use my tongs to pop them into the boiling water, because boiling water is quite hot. Push them down into the water. Them in nicely. And now I need to count out for 10 seconds. Now I know that it's been now I know that it's been ten seconds because they need to be nice and soft. So they are nice and soft. It's just stop photosynthesis occurring. And then I need to turn off my Bunsen burner. I'm actually going to turn my Bunsen burner off before I take them out because I don't particularly want to stick my hand over a hot Bunsen burner. So I'm going to push them out. And pop them on my paper towel. 
Now the set next instruction says to turn off the Bunsen burner, but I did that before I took them out because I didn't want to burn my hand by putting it over the Bunsen burner too much. Now, the next bit we need to pay attention to because the next bit has the potential to be quite dangerous, which is why we turn the Bunsen burner off. Because it's involved in ethanol, and ethanol is highly, highly flammable. So the next part, I'm going to take our leaf. This is the one that's been in the dark, and the bigger one, and the bigger one is the one that's been in the light. And we're going to put one of them into a boiling tube with ethanol in it. So the ethanol is normally see-through, but this ethanol has a colour added to it. To make it less appealing for people uh, who might be inclined to drink it because this is not the sort of ethanol you might find in wine and things this is industrial ethanol that would severely injure you so i'm not going to put it into the boiling water now the water is quite hot but it's still going to be hot enough to make the ethanol boil quite fast because ethanol only boils at 70 degrees whereas water boils at 100 so it should, we should start to see bubbles forming and yes, if you're looking very carefully, you can see bubbles forming in the ethanol. Now I don't want that ethanol to boil fully because that can be very, very dangerous. So I need to make sure that I keep an eye on it, keep watching it, make sure that whilst a few bubbles is okay, I don't really want loads of bubbles to show that my ethanol is boiling. And the ethanol is extracting the colour out of the leaf. So it'll take, it'll take a couple of minutes. And once I fish that leaf out, it should have lost a lot of its green colour. My camera's just drooped slightly. It should have lost a lot of its green colour. So, my leaf has been in there for a little while now and I'll, I'll fish it out. Careful thing. So it's lost a lot of its colour. And the leaf is actually quite crunchy when it first comes out of the ethanol. Of the ethanol. And so what I need to do is I need to dunk it back into the water, partly to soften up the leaf, but also partly uh, to wash off that ethanol, because I don't really want it on my hands. And you can see that the colour has changed quite significantly from what it was. So it's a lot paler. Okay, so you should now have filled in most of the missing words from your method. We've just got the few that are in relation to the results to fill in. So at this point, you're going to be filling in the last couple for your method and you're gonna be filling in your results. Okay, so we're first going to show you the results for the leaf that did have light. So the leaf that was in light for 24 hours beforehand. So these are the results that you're going to be looking at first. Right, I'm laying my leaf out on a petri dish now. Um, I'm going to get my iodine, my iodine. So I need to be very careful with iodine uh, because it will stain my fingers. I've spread the leaf out so that it's uh, nice and flat so I can see it. And I don't want to put too much iodine on this uh, because um, the colour of the iodine will mask any colour effects. Uh, but equally I don't want to put too little on them because then I won't be able to see the colour change. And I'm looking for a colour, it'll either stay brown if there's no starch or it'll go sort of blue-black if there is starch. And it takes a little bit of time usually. If I drop a few drops, oh yeah, you can immediately see, I bring it in a bit closer, you can immediately see that it's gone quite dark. The colour is starting to really change, it's much, much blacker than the brown it was to start with. So that's what it started as, and that's what it's got on. So it's much, much blacker. So that leaf has had a colour.
colour change from brown to black. And that's the leaf that was out in the sun. So you should now have filled out all of your missing words from your method. If not, you can go back at any point and re-watch bits and fill it in. So now we're going to go on to the results for when the leaf had no light for 24 hours before being tested. So you need to fill in the observations for no light. So once again I've got my leaf, this time this one is the one that's left in the dark overnight. Um, I've got my iodine again. I'm just going to add a few drops and we'll see if we get a colour change. Not really much happening, not really much happening there. Maybe you compare it to the other one. definitely two different results. So remember this one is the one that was left in the dark overnight and this one was left out uh, in bright sunlight uh, until I picked it this morning and this one I picked this morning but from inside the cupboard. Okay so that is the end of the experiment section so you should now have completed your method and your results. If you have got to do either still, please do not move on because we're going to be marking them now. You need to pause on each of the following pictures so that you can mark and most importantly correct any mistakes you've made from your method and also from your uh, results. So once again, please don't move on unless you have marked your method and your results. Okay, so normally we would draw our diagram whilst we were doing the experiment, but we obviously couldn't do that. So we're going to draw our diagram now. Please make sure that you have a pencil and a ruler to draw. Okay, so just like the method is one of the most complex that you have to do, so are the uh, is the diagram or are the diagrams, I should say, because there are kind of three steps that you need for the diagram. If you think you're not going to be able to fit this all in the box that I've put in the worksheet, in the booklet, that's absolutely fine. Just get a piece of A4 paper and draw them onto there and you can slip those in because I actually used a piece of A4 paper so that I could draw it nice and big and clear. Uh, but you can use the box if you want. So... As you can see, I've tried to draw this as neatly and accurately as possible. So that's what you're aiming for is neatness and accuracy. So I'm going to go through each individual diagram so that you can draw them as, as accurately as possible. Oh, and uh, one last thing, it's fine to use pen to do your labels with, just not to draw with. Okay, so let's concentrate then on the first diagram. So we have the beaker. We've got it half filled with water and then we've got the leaf inside. There isn't obviously a symbol for a leaf, so you just draw something that looks like a leaf. Now this is a bit where people often get things wrong. The gauze is a dotted line and it's always a good idea to leave a little gap between each of these three things, the beaker, the gauze and the tripod. Um, so the gauze, remember, is the kind of, it looks a bit like a net or grid that holds this beaker on top uh, and then we've got our tripod and then instead of writing Bunsen burner and drawing a Bunsen burner diagram it's much easier to just draw a triangle and write heat inside and then of course we have to have our heat mat underneath um, for safety. When I label I always do everything horizontally um, because it stops me from writing at funny angles because people often start writing labels at like weird angles but they should be horizontal like we normally write. So that's the first um, part of the diagram. So looking at the second part of the diagram, it's much simpler obviously. We've got our beaker, it's still got the water in. Um, I've done the water level gone slightly up because I've now put something in it which would raise the water level, but you don't have to do that. Um, and it's a boiling tube, not a test tube, because a boiling tube is bigger and wider, okay? 
It's filled with ethanol, um, the purple stuff. We don't need to color it in though because it's a diagram. Again, there's no symbol for the leaf. And then this is really important. I've put hot water because it's the fact that this is hot that boils this. Because remember, ethanol has a lower boiling point than water does. So this is our second diagram. And last of all, our third diagram. So we've got our Petri dish here with our leaf in it. We've got our dropper and I've just colored the end in and done a drop to show that there is iodine solution in there, okay? And again, all my labels are added really neatly. Okay, so you could pause on here and copy your three diagrams either into the box or onto a piece of A4 paper. So remember, please don't move on unless you have done your diagrams completely. So we're now moving on to our purple box evaluation of our experiment. Okay, so ignore the left hand side. I just want you to answer the two questions on the right hand side, please. So do not move on, pause the video until you've done the answers on the right hand side of the purple box. Okay, so now we're going to move on to SC9, adapt this method to prove light is needed. So what I would like you to do here is come up with as many ways as you can, there's three that I can think of of how you could prepare the leaf beforehand so that you had one that had been in light and one that hadn't. So there's kind of three different ways you could do this. See if you can think up any of them. Now, Mr. French told you about one, so you should be able to get at least one, okay? If that's all you can get, that's fine. We'll go through the answers in a minute. As per usual, Please don't move on until you have completed that purple section because we're going to be marking it now. Okay, so pause on this picture in order to check all of your answers are correct and also make sure that you add any in that you missed. Okay, so please can you upload a picture or photograph rather of your diagram into lesson five. So I want a photograph of your diagram uploaded into Shobi lesson five. Okay, so if you still have some time left in your lesson, then you're gonna move on to the next activities. If you don't have any time left, that's absolutely fine. Just leave these activities, you don't need to do them, okay? So the first activity you can do is if you look in the back of your booklet for activity five, there's an exam question you can have a go at. You can also then mark the exam question once you have completed it. Okay, so only move on if you have answered the exam question and you have marked and corrected it. Okay, and then the last activity you can have a go at if you have time is I want you to take this section, factors affecting photosynthesis and create a revision card or you might need more than one. If you don't have any revision cards at home, just cut up some pieces of paper. Well done, that's lesson five completed. <laughs>